sure you've got some replica stormtrooper armor, but there is one fan who is totally shaming you. He has you beat. It's the worst movie of all time. Here's a hint. 12-year-old girls will hate this story. I'm going to love it. We have news for the philatelist in your life. Or maybe you just want to bribe our news director. Nigel checks in from the multiverse for the first time in 2013 and much, much more. That's all coming up today's installment of Slice. Covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. SliceofSciFi.com Well, Heidi ho good neighbors, it's time for another Slice of Sci-Fi. I'm Michael Harmon and Gay. <laughs> <laughs> Your peppiness scares Isn't me. Isn't it? It's, and it's, Sam it's, said philatelist. She did. I am Brian Brown. I'm Sam Roberts. I'm Megan Zier. I'm Ben Raginton. Hey, howdy, hey, and I am Keith. Oh, I'm still, still not Noah. Noah. Oh, I'm sorry. Still not Noah. Shocking. Shocking. All right, let's do some news. Brian got the best story. I did. <laughs> Your news team is next. Your story's not as slouchy either, though. So, so imagine this, the worst movie of all time. Uh, that's, that's a pretty serious title. Think about it. It right. really is. Oh, easily won by Twilight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was voted the worst movie of all time in a new poll. The poll really? The vote, yeah, the vote was held by Rift Tracks. Which, uh, think about where that's coming from. Yeah, exactly. A site dedicated to fun-poking altern- uh, alternate commentaries to movies by performed by former MST3K cast members Mike Nelson, Kevin Murphy, and Bill Corbett. Rift Tracks po- polled over half a million of its users and a Robert Pattinson, Kristen Stewart starring movie were named as the worst ever by over 35,000 people, folks. Wow. The website said of the teen saga, <clears throat> there's a lot more to cover in this vast, sprawling film series, so let us try to boil it down for you. <clears throat> mumble, 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 moon eyes, mumble, 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 lay on the field, mumble, mumble, perv in a, <laughs> perv on a baby, mumble, mumble. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, that's a classic. Yeah. You don't know about that one? Oh, yeah. I don't want to know about that oh. one. No? Oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, the second film that won runner-up was Batman and Robin. <laughs> wow. I love that movie. Worthy candidate. No, uh, actually, that was, that was trash. 29,000 votes for that. Also featuring the top 10 were Catwoman. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Spider-Man 3. Okay. Yay. Yay. No, uh, crap. Super Mario Brothers. Yes. Wow. I love Super Mario Brothers. Uh, Battlefield Earth, which no, I know. No, that deserves it. No, yeah. no, it doesn't. That's, that's, I couldn't totally. get five minutes into that. It's thing. so bad. And The Last Airbender. Oh. oh. Tragic. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some, yeah, some good ones. Awesome stuff, though. But wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Battlefield Earth got unseated for tub, but for worse though. That's that's impressive. Well, Have you seen those movies? Oh yeah, I, I haven't have. seen oh, all yes. of them. I've seen some of them. I've, and seen, I've seen a good portion for, of them. For non-fans, at least for me as a I've non-fan, it was very painful. <laughs> I hmm. tried. I really tried to watch Battlefield Earth only because I knew it was such a god awful bad film. Mm-hmm. I I couldn't get through it. Yeah. Oh, it was so I, horrible. I, I watched, and I've read the book. I've and, tried. I, I get through it, but the entire time, you you have to be able to uh, basically get a group together, have lots of alcohol, and, and MST3K tear, tear, yeah. tear, yeah. tear it apart yeah. because it's just it's so bad. Way can get through it. Oh. Well, if you are like our news director, you've probably watched the reimagined title sequence on the Doctor Who Christmas special, The Loved Snowman, it. multiple mm-hmm. times. Yes, I'm looking at you guys. The sequence featured the long-awaited return of the Doctor's face to the credits, along with a new TARDIS console room, which helped kick off the countdown to the 50th anniversary later this year Love in style. And of course, there will be a variety of collectible ways to celebrate 50 years of our favorite oh, Time Lord. Yeah. Yeah, everybody needs their money, including a set of stamps from the Royal Mail. Ooh. This is awesome. Yes. Stamp wow. Awesome. Yes, the series of stamps will highlight all 11 Doctors and be available for sale this year. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. If you're not watching the video, you were really missing <laughs> You're missing it. out yeah, the pictures. Of those yeah. are nice. I'm going to have to write um, to Darren. The stamps yeah. can be used to mail important letters and packages, but we know a lot of our audience will seek them out for their collections. And Slice of Sci-Fi would love you forever if you sent us a set of those. Right? Yeah, I've, got a, of those. I've got that a friend who, awesome. lives in, um, who lives in uh, Surrey. I'm going to be contacting him. There yes, you go. Indeed. I know he's going to be, because he's a Who fan, he'll have a set for himself. Yeah. So, when he was 12 years old, 
Michael Armand. No, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Chris. <What? laughs> we're, we're not talking about you mean that. Back again, in the are Cretaceous we? period? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the Cretaceous period. Back uh, when, that, that was a sponge. It, it was. Yeah. We can't talk about that it's anymore. Cretaceous period? Did back when he was 12 years old, Michael Armand gave, when the earth was cooling. Um, <laughs> uh, no, anyways, Chris Lee saw Star Wars the first time and fell in love with uh, not only a galaxy far, far away, but also its iconic ships. One in particular, the Millennium Falcon. Now, Lee, who lives near Nashville, Tennessee, tells a Tennessean newspaper that since an early age, he dreamed of having his own full-size model of the Falcon. Wow. Now, Lee has taken the first steps towards making that dream a reality. With the help of fans across the globe, Lee has begun work on a 114-foot replica of the Millennium Falcon. Wow. Now, Lee connected with fans via the internet to design and begin work on the ship, which will be constructed on an 88-acre <laughs> piece of land west of Nashville. That's fantastic. It is pretty awesome. Holy cow. Now, Lee is having a 400 by 400 foot area cleared as a construction site and says the complicated, uh, the completed Falcon would stay, of course, right there. Now, Lee is considering on what else the place could become, a nonprofit perhaps, or a mar- maker camp, as they call them, mm-hmm. which is encourages creativity and construction uh, with this big spaceship in the middle of this property, basically, <laughs> which would be kind of cool. Now, Lee is a member of the 501st, uh, met his wife at Dragon Con six years ago. He proposed to her, by the way, at the Star Wars Celebration at Disney World. Hmm. Way cool. Lee says he expects the whole project to take at least five years and cost anywhere from 200000 to eight hundred thousand dollars. Wow! Yeah, Holy moly. and of course we'll keep our eye on it. And of course, as it's being built, I think say we send Hickerson out there. Yeah, I think so. I think we should. Well, uh, the interesting thing is, uh, the, with they have to start, they have to have like Kickstarters going. They've got to do donations on it. I mean, some contributions. Thing. Yeah, unless he's a r- independently wealthy guy and just wants to blow eight hundred thousand dollars on a model, I, I can't imagine that. But you if he wants know. to blow a hundred thousand our way, we'd be happy That's to great. advertise him. For we him, will yeah. definitely give you a spot in the show every single week. Yes. <laughs> you guys are implying that if he makes this happen, we're not going to give him that spot every single week? I know. Is it, well, I know. Well, we're, okay, we're, fine. It really goes a long way. <laughs> we're, we're news whores. We'll do it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be more ecstatic if he gives us money. But <laughs> All right. It's all about the enthusiasm. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have time for one more? Oh, yes. Okay, cool. Okay, last year's sale of Lucasfilm to Disney could see a galaxy far, far away finding a new home on the pages of comic books. Ooh, but Don't they yeah. already have okay. some of them already, though? For the comics? past decade or so, Dark Horse has yeah, been the home no. to the ongoing comic book series based on the Star Wars franchise. Oh. With the sale, Star Wars Move could be going Marvel. back to where it originally started life on oh. the comic book page. Oh. Marvel. Yes. 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 A rumor, not. Yeah, a rumor cropped up over the holiday season that when the current contract with Dark Horse expires later this year, it will not be renewed. Well, that means you got to buy all the Dark Horse stuff before it goes away. Well, no, wow. won't they get the... Yeah. Won't they just they get should the, have they won't print any more of them. That's what I'm saying. Hmm. You know, well, so don't you think that Marvel would just get the rights to it? Or no, I don't no, know. They Is don't that not that how it works? I, don't I have know. no idea. We'll see what happens. Um, Marvel will be given the contract to publish all Star Wars comics at that point. It's not known yet if titles will be worked into the regular lineup, or will Marvel create a special branch of the company that deals with the Star Wars Comics Report's Blue Sky Disney blog? It'll take a couple of years for the old deals to work through, of course, but the stories that Dark Horse have coming down the pipeline will be the last, and you can expect anything new from Marvel dealing with Star Wars would arrive around 2015. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Well, I mean, and the, the, that's a pity because Dark Horse has done mm-hmm. such good work with the comics. Well, Dark Horse is yeah. one of the, you know, they're they're doing great comics. They've I mean, always they have. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a great company. It really is. Yeah. Um, the last story I have. You know what? I, I don't think we have time for it. It's oh, not important. Bummer. It, it, we just bad. don't have time for it. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. Moving on. It's, it's time, time to, to put on your space goggles, strap, strap yourselves in, and prepare, and prepare for... Tales from the Multiverse! When we last left the story, Lance Neutron was taken by terrifying two-headed aliens called puppies. We take you now to the Puppy Mothership Detention Center, where Lance is just waking up. Oh, Bosco, what happened? My head is pounding like when I try and read a book. Um, who's Bosco? Who are you? Where am I? I'm Quag. You're in the detention center of the Puppy Mothership. We're cellmates. Quag, you poor man. What did they do to your hair? Oh, my species doesn't have fur. I'm a Ferengi. A Ferengi? Ferengi are totally gross. I am a Ferengi. We are completely different. 
How are you different? The Ferengi follow the rules of acquisition, while the Fawengi follow the principles of exploitative business practices. No chance of getting sued there. What? Well, never mind. So, Quag, how did you end up in the detention center? Well, I sell hats, and when I heard about a race of two-headed warriors, I came here to sell them helmets. I figure I can sell twice as many helmets. But when the helmets got here, they were completely useless. Why? Because they were all left-headed helmets. Well, that's a shame. But that's nothing compared to what you did. I heard you told the Grand Emperor Sparky to go fetch a stick. It was a joke. You see, on my planet, puppies are cute little... Never mind. Yeah, but if you read that pamphlet, you know, 10 things not to do on planet Puppo, uh, telling somebody to fetch a stick is top of the list. Well, I guess I'm not that smart. Why not? Well, I guess it started when I was growing up in the 2050s and 60s. You see, Quag, I was allergic to cybernetic brain implants, so I couldn't access the hollow net where most education takes place. I had to go to a special school for other kids like me and children of stupid hippies that didn't want to plug their kids into computers. Hey, isn't 2050 in the future? Well, yeah, I'm from the future. Well, you can tell the rest of your story after breakfast. We're having gumdrop this morning. You mean those little candies that get stuck in your teeth? Uh, I think it's another one of those words that means something different on your planet. Just look up and open your mouth. Oh, it's horrible. Hey Slicers, it's Brian from Slice of Sci-Fi TV, and I have the coolest new application to show you. It's a Slice of Sci-Fi app. Here's how it works by selecting the Slice of Sci-Fi application. It brings you to the home page where you can select an episode, ask a frequently asked question, go to the Slice of Sci-Fi website, the Slice of Sci-Fi TV website, and the Slice of Sci-Fi XM Sirius Satellite site. So you can read, watch, and listen to any of the episodes. Start off by selecting an episode. Uh, once you've done that, you can leave video feedback. Hey Slicers, I really loved the last episode. Audio feedback. Hey Slicers, I'm leaving you some feedback for the radio show. Or send us an email. So download the app and share your thoughts because we want to hear from you. SliceofSciFi.com. Well, we don't have an interview because, well, it was the holidays and we mm -hmm. decided to all take some time off and that includes summer as well. So we uh, didn't schedule anything really. And right, so, right. That's all right. That's we okay. We got plenty to talk about. We got about. lots to talk about. So what, what I decided that we wanted to talk about was the movies coming out in 2013. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. So I got a whole big list of them here that I that I uh, basically uh, pilfered off the internet. And uh, we're going to go down them real fast. So um, starting in January of this year, January 4th, actually, so it's already came out, All Superheroes Must Die. Yes, I um, saw the trailer for this. It looks I amazing. This one. Yeah, a group of superheroes lose their power and are put through a series of brutal challenges. And it's mm -hmm. already available, basically, uh, on uh, Video On Demand, mm -hmm. iTunes, Amazon. But it's going to be in some theaters that uh, the Fridays, mm -hmm. this coming Friday. So... Um, Storage 24, which comes out on January 11th. Uh, mm. uh, Doctor Who, uh, Doctor Who's Noel Clark stoles, stars in this thriller where a military cargo plane crashes in London, releasing its deadly cargo on the city, and a group of people who are trapped in a storage facility with the horrific creature. Ooh. Yeah, kind of good. Uh, no, Marlon Whalen. Who cares? <laughs> uh, for some strange reason, I just don't care about Marlon Whalen. Um, uh, Mama, on January 18th, it's a Guillermo del Toro produced oh. this film. Oh, Ooh. I've seen the commercials. It's based on a creepy short about two yeah. little orphan girls who survive in the wild for five years before being rescued and sent to live with their uncle and aunt, uh, Nikolai Kos uh, Costa Waldu, well, Waldu and uh, Jessica Chastain. Well, that's, um, you know, oh, okay. uh, he's, he's plays, Game of Thrones. Uh, Game of yeah. Thrones, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's, is their dead mother still watching over them? Dun, dun, dun. Mm -hmm. So it <clears throat> looks interesting. Uh, so here's here's your minus popcorn flick for January. Hansel and Gretel, Witch Hunters. Right. So oh, remember, that's terrible. remember that the early part of the year is the dumping ground for, <laughs> yes. for movies that the big studios consider crappy. And Hansel mm -hmm. and Gretel has had horrible, horrible buzz. Yes. Yeah, so horrible basically buzz. Hansel, who's Jeremy Renner, and Gretel, who's uh, Gemma Arterson, are all grown up. Now they're hunting witches, including... 
I'm Key Johnson. Because oh. because uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter was, was such a great enough. hit. We yeah. got to go yeah. to Hansel and well. Gretel. Yeah, no. Gretel. Yes. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh, but mm-hmm. Fomke Jensen, I love. Her. I know. I love her too. So mm. um, <clears throat> on January 25th, John dies at the end, which has been that, that actually looks neat. very yeah. good. Yeah. Mm. So it's a long. Uh, it's a movie adapt- adaptation of David Wong's cult novel about a drug called soy sauce that either kills you or lets you see paranormal weirdness. Oh. It's, that movie is on iTunes right now. Okay, so yeah. so there you go. Okay, but it's not it's supposed to be te- technically released to theaters. I don't think till January twenty fifth. There's so. early a lot of early, early releases yeah, happening on on Apple TV right now. Or it's, iTunes or Amazon. Yeah. You can get to yeah. watch a lot of them early ahead of time. It's amazing. Uh, in February, we get um, blah blah blah. Oh, this one's one of my favorites. I really oh, want to see. Oh, you missed one in January, and that is the uh, we were just talking about Batman Returns Part Two. Uh, it's an animated. These are that's all, animated. These are all live action. Oh, okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, but yeah, the the Batman animated ones coming out too as well. Uh, bodies. Have you guys seen the previews for no. this one? No. I, no, I so know nothing. this is uh, an adaptation of Isaac Marion's novel about a zombie who's Nicholas Holt, uh, who who played Beast in uh, X Men First Class who falls in love with one of the last remaining humans, and their love might have the power to transform a post-apocalyptic world. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, mm. it's it's gotten pretty good buzz, kind of comedic-y, but it also looked really good. I saw a preview of it. It looked pretty decent. Sounds good. Um, blah, blah. Nah. Blah, nah. blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Nah. Okay. Nah. Uh, actually, Side, effect, blah, blah, side blah, blah, Effects blah. looks good, which is uh, Steven Soderbergh's uh, latest film about a woman, uh, Runa Mari, uh, who takes a revolutionary new drug called Ablixia to cope with her husband, who's Channing Tatum, coming home from prison. And there are some really freaky side effects, I guess. Oh, Soderbergh is just yes, he's even, awesome. Even when his movies aren't like fantastic, they're always mm-hmm. interesting. Like he tries interesting stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the new uh, YA one that's coming out is Beautiful Creatures on February 13th. It's one of the year's many oh. attempts to create a new Twilight. Yes. The film mm-hmm. adapts the best-selling YA series about a young witch named Lena who becomes an outcast in a small town and the boy who loves her anyway. That's, and from the previews, so. it didn't look it, that bad. It no. doesn't look bad, but I don't think it's gonna. It's got some. It's got an interesting Twilight. cast. It's got I mean, Jeremy that? Iron and mm-hmm. Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's good people. But. It might. It might be. So we'll see. Um, Escape from Planet Earth on February 14th. Uh, that looks interesting. With, yeah. Um, is that the one Brandon with Brandon Fraser? Brandon oh, Fraser. Brandon Fraser. Yeah. Yeah. I heard of that. Brandon Fraser is either really great or, or really bad. Right? So he's yeah. never in between. He's, <laughs> His, he does one or other. The, one or the, the other. The projects he picks sometimes are questionable. Yeah, yeah. So he's an alien astronaut who answers a distress call from Earth, but it's a trap and he ends up in Area 51. It's and so trap. Admiral Akbar is in there? It's a trap. <laughs> it's, a trap. Yeah. it's a trap. And it's up to his nerdy brother, who's Gary, uh, by, played by Rob Corddry, to save him. <laughs> and, uh, so that's that's the big so one. Sounds like comedy. Uh, yeah, it sounds like it's probably more comedy than uh, anything else. I don't see Rob Corddry <laughs> being super serious. Yeah, me either. Uh, March we have Jack the Giant Slayer. Which, that looks interesting. Which is again Nicholas Holt again, mm-hmm. uh, and this is uh, Brian Singer. He yeah. did this one. So yep, uh, basically, Nicholas Holt is a farmhand who will, opens the door to the land of giants, starting a war as giants try to retake our world. Mike and I watched the, the, the trailer. The, tra- the trailer looks back. really really yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, we also watched this one too, which is March eighth. Oz the Great and Powerful. Yes. Yes. James Franco. Right. That, yeah. that is looks very interesting. It's a it's a very interesting Prequel. reversed take on um, the, the, the whole Oz. Wizard of Oz. No, thing. Yeah. it's actually the prequel. It's to the, the Wizard prequel. Of but you, so, you but, could call it a reverse take, I think. I guess. Yeah. Well, it, it's it, yeah. I mean, it's it's looking at Oz from a different perspective. Almost like he's Dorothy, right? Right. Oh, yeah, well, kinda. sort well, of. Well, that's kind of how the story goes in a the books. A little bit. Yeah. 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 The books is that the wizard goes first, basically, mm-hmm. and sets up as as mm-hmm. becomes the wizard in there. Right. So. Right. Should be interesting. How uh, he became. Looks good. It, it's a wizard origin story. Oh. Uh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Uh, the Crudes. Uh, uh, no, that's not. I don't want to read that. A GI Joe Retaliation. March 21st. Finally. I know Finally. it's going to yes. be crappy, but it Got has it. The Rock, so I'm on board. I know, yeah. but they're killing Bruce Channing Tatum really early in the movie. Well, well yeah. he's bigger than I, it. I, 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 I'm not sure if I can forgive The Rock for the incredible journey to the island. Oh, oh yeah. my. I didn't watch that. Oh. Oh. It yeah. Neither did I. It was goofy. Let's, uh, oh, I, uh, more than five minutes of it, let's put it that way. Uh, <laughs> March 29th, The Host comes out. Mike and I watched the preview mm. for this that as well. Looks it's the new Stephanie Meyer book. Yeah, oh. looks interesting. Uh, um, it may redeem Stephanie Meyer for not some of us, but possible. I kind of so doubt it. Here's the, here's the gist of it. Alien invasion Earth has already succeeded with emotionless parasites controlling almost all humans, except one girl who gets I- implanted can't stop loving her boyfriend. <laughs> and that could change everything. Why is, why is anybody surprised? Yeah. <laughs> Love I mean, come on. Come on. Yeah. Uh, oh. 
Uh, <laughs> are these trailers on? Uh, oh, <laughs> you, no. You're we killing just Megan. Killed Megan. You just, just killed Megan. I'm having a hard time doing the video on that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got in April. Uh, we have Upstream Color, which looks interesting. Mm. Uh, primers, uh, Shane Carruth uh, returns at last with a strange and confusing movie about a man and a woman who are entangled in the life cycle of ageless organism. Mm, I don't know this yeah, one. Yeah, I, no I saw a, br- to me. I saw a br- mm. brief blurb on it. Uh, Evil Dead comes out on April 12th. Yes! That should be interesting. So, yes! Uh, I mean, you gotta see it. Yeah. You gotta I, I, see I, it. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm holding it. Oh, the I mean, first one, we'll but... See. Mm. Yeah, but also on April 12th, folks, this is what's gonna compete for The Evil Dead. A Scary Movie 5. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. then, then Evil Dead's got Evil, it. Evil Dead. The winner. <laughs> Uh, then Oblivion, which we talk about, right, right. Uh, comes out April 19th or April 12th in IMAX. Right. Um, basically, uh, it uh, looks pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, uh, humanity is abandoned Earth. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Tom Cruise comes down to check out some some drones that had problems and finds out that, dun dun dun, he's not alone. Not alone. Right. Yeah. So, um, a Rob Zombie flick coming out on April 26th, Lord of Salem. If you like Rob Zombie, not I like the song, out. Lords of Salem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in May, then, Iron Man 3. Yes! Oh, yes. yes. And does Can't that wait. look intense? Oh, man. It is going to... They have amped it up to the nth right? level on that one. Yeah, it looks pretty uh, pretty cool. May is going to be like the powerhouse month because you also have um, Star Trek Into Darkness on May 17th Ooh. as well. Yeah, it should be pretty exciting. <laughs> I, I know. Well, May <laughs> May's usually the month that kicks off the summer, the summer season anyway. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so it's going to be the big one. Uh I think there's one uh, called The Purge, which looks interesting. Ethan Hawke and Lena Headley starred in this uh, weird Aww, movie. Oh, Lena. Uh, d- uh, dystopian future where overcrowding has forced the United States to institute a 12-hour period every year, which nothing is a crime. Wow. Even murder. Wow. Festival! Festival! So basically, yes. it's, 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 it's open season on human beings. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. The hunters will be all yeah. happy about it. Uh, then in June, we have the Will Smith movie that you were thinking of, oh, okay. After Earth. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Will Smith and his son, Jaden. Of course. I like uh, them both. Yeah. Starting the movie about where humanity has abandoned Earth after a war with aliens, but the father and son crash land on ruined Earth, and the father's injured, forcing the son to search for help. It's... Uh, you know, enemy mine ish. Yeah, okay, sounds yeah, like to me. Sounds like enemy mine meets oblivion. Actually, <laughs> yeah, I, maybe you're right. It could be. Um, this is the end, aka the end of the world. I don't right. know if you guys have seen the previews for that mm-hmm. one. I have. Familiar. Seth Rogen adapts uh, his short film of Jay and Seth versus the Apocalypse. Have you guys seen mm-hmm. that? Mm-hmm. It's out there. Anyways, uh, uh, Rogan, Jay Baruchel, James Franco again. Oh, of course, I know what this is. Play themselves at a Hollywood party where the end of the world suddenly happens. Out yeah, there. the I trailer's out there. It. It's I, I don't know. I, I we'll it's going to be. I have a hard time with Seth Rogen. It's Seth Rogen. Pineapple it's Express. Seth Rogen. Yes. Pineapple Express all over again. And of course, June fourteenth, Man of Steel. Yes. yes. So I'm uh, I'm excited to see that. Uh, also, uh, June twenty first, Monsters University, which is basically Monsters Yay. Inc. Two. Monster, it's Monsters Monster Inc. Prequel. Monster yeah, prequel. Yay. Uh, and then June twenty first, also World War Z. Oh wow. Uh-huh. Eh. A little nervous. Wow. Yeah. Uh, June 28th, Kick-Ass 2, Balls to the Wall. Yes! Nice. That could be good. I'm excited yes! about it. That could be good. <clears throat> and then, of course, June 28th, White House Down. <laughs> what? Okay, take a second. Seriously? Terrorists take over the White House, and only Channing Tatum can save the president, who is played by Jamie Foxx, but still. So is it a comedy? Wait a minute. Yeah, I uh, think we, it's probably an action-y we shoot don't up. Know what it, it sounds is. like they, sh- they, they needn't be yeah. serious. Yeah. <laughs> they shouldn't be. Yeah. Uh, July 3rd, uh, Despicable Me comes out, Yay! too. Um, also, mm. July 3rd, The Lone Ranger. Uh-huh. That looks good. No. I don't know. I am really warming up to this. I, I am warming I'm, I'm up little, to this. I don't know. It's like I a Western really version of Pirates. It's just an excuse for Johnny exactly. Depp to be Johnny Depp. Yeah. To be and weird. So I've, I, seen, I've seen a couple previews that I am actually warming up to this. I think... Think it might be better. That's because you're drinking the the preview Kool Aid, Mike. That's why it it very well could be. I will I will admit to that. It's very possible. I'm I'm just enjoying the trailer. I'm just just interested to see how many Native Americans get mad about Johnny Depp. Oh, Oh, they've already already been mad. I'm I'm already disturbed by what we're seeing. We're running out of time. It's already a problem. Okay, folks. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Pacific Rim on July 12th. Yes. Yes! Yes! Holy cow! I'm looking for that. Look exciting. July 19th, ripped. Ryan Reynolds and Jeff Bridges started this adapt- adaptation of a comic book about a dead cop who sticks around the poli- to police the supernatural. Oh, sounds like Spectre. Yeah, so it should be interesting. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Smurfs 2, whoop de doo <laughs> um, July 26th, Wolverine. Oh, yes, okay. yes part yeah. two, yes. Um, here's some that I didn't know about that are coming out. Uh, in August, 
300 Rise of an Empire. Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Red 2 is coming out, which... Oh, yay! Yay! Oh, cool. uh, and, of course, Elysium, which is Neil Blomkamp's uh, uh-huh. new film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excited about that. Cool. Uh, Percy Jackson, whoop de doo uh-huh. um, out, uh, But the good thing about Percy Jackson is Nathan Fillion's in it. Ooh. Ooh. He plays Hermes. Yay. Okay. So that's yeah. kind of good. Um, uh, Mortal Instruments City of Bones, which is another would-be hmm. Twilight flick as well. And blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, September, Riddick is coming out, folks. Really? Oh, I, I Frankenstein, The Tomb, October, Sin City, uh, you know, all sorts of different things coming out. World Ends, Paranormal Activity 5. Mm. Wow. Yeah, you guys can mm. go and see them. Ender's Game in November, folks. Hmm. November. Hunger Games. Lots of Finally. stuff. Finally. Oh. Thor, Hunger Games in November as well. Oh, December, more, th- you yeah. know. Yeah, and then The Hobbit again, yes, right? exactly. Yeah. So we got lots more we can talk about. Oh my today, gosh, so. it's amazing! We how have much. a bunch of un- unannounced ones too. So eh, we'll come All back right. and we'll jabber. We might have to come back on Extra that. Cut. Yeah.